Well, welcome into the Toby Foreman Show, week 11. Week it, 11, baby. It does not seem like it's already week 11, but we finally got to our, our bye week. Thank goodness, and we get a little rest going in the postseason. Sounds but, like you need it. Yeah, I, you know, we just uh, we just got out of freshman athletic period, and I was fussing at them to hurry up and finish their life at the end. So, uh, But I, I will tell you that uh, the freshmen, speaking of, Extremely proud of those guys. This is our fourth consecutive district championship, and this is our second out of three years to go undefeated with the freshman team. And that's a that's a big deal because it's the only two times in the history of the school that there's ever been an undefeated team. So, not ten and zero like the last group three years ago, but nine zero and one. Our one tie was against Lake Travis, fourteen to fourteen. But you know that's a pretty pretty tall task uh, of of doing that much with them. But I'm extremely proud of those guys and and. You know, our future is very bright, and I will tell you, you look around, and you see some, a lot of those freshmen playing on the, on the varsity here shortly. You know, um, some of them in the postseason, uh, but uh, others will definitely be future starters as sophomores for the Gray Wolves. Oh, yeah, and they played wonderfully. I mean, just watching those kids execute coaching at the, at the, uh, junior varsity and, uh, and the sophomore levels. The coaches have been really great with those kids, and they, that's what's wonderful as a family. You know, they move up with those kids. Those kids, they coach them as a sophomore. They coach them as a junior, and they coach them as a senior. Keeping your group together has been integral here, I tell you, buddy. Yeah, you know, I used to work for a guy, and he used to say, the best thing about a freshman is next year he'll be a sophomore. You know what I mean? So you still got them for a little bit. But uh, we're excited about them. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> We find out this week where our JV finished. Uh, but they finished with a, a, I can't remember if it was, uh, seven and three, I believe is what they went. So, you know, finished out with a win. Uh, we, we swept Harger Heights on the sub varsity level, A and B, JV and freshman. It's the first time that's happened since I've been here. And, um, you know, we got to the game the other night and we just, you know, Mari Starr got hurt in the first quarter. And mm. I think that kind of, you know, uh, we competed the whole game. Our defense played really good, but offensively, that pretty much put the exclamation point on us. I mean, we were missing four or five starters at that point. And, it was just tough to move the ball. Kudos to Coach uh, uh, Coach Humble and their guys because they did a great job of defending us, as good as anybody has a, the entire year. It's just we were kind of, you know, when that happened, it was just like one of them deals where, God, this may not, it just may not happen, you know, type deal. But uh, I was proud of the kids. We fought until the very last play, and we were throwing to the end zone, you know, to uh, to end the game. And we actually had a touchdown call back on the what should have been the last play of the game. Um, uh, Malachi Jerome hit, uh, hit Lamont Reed in the end zone. He went up and got it and they called holding, which I don't think I've ever, I told Coach Humble the next day, I said, I don't think I've ever seen a holding call when uh, a team down by three scores on the last seconds of the game. But, uh, anyway, you know, we, we played it out, but I was proud of our kids because, you know, we wanted to win that game and it meant a lot to us. But at the same time, you know, they understood, uh, that once we were, you know, at towards the seconds of the game, Continue to play for pride and play because what we got going into the playoffs, we wanted to finish out with a score going in and, and bring some momentum with us. So you're playing an injured, a lot of injured players, I'll tell you, and, and they got, they had like one, maybe one or two injuries, and they played their starters to the end. They were playing hard to the end. They never quit. So, I mean, your guys were, um, like I, like you said, if you have them hurt a couple plays, go your way, get your quarterback back. Well, and it, well now, here's the thing. Now, I ain't going to take nothing away from them. They had some guys hurt. Number four got hurt in the first quarter as well, and that's one of their better players. Mm-hmm. 97 played with a dang arm cast on. Kudos to that guy. Huge. 20, 22's been playing with a cast all year. I think he got his off. But, uh, you know, not like I said, not taking anything away from uh, – we're not using it in injuries as excuses whatsoever. I just know offensively it definitely affected us once Star went out because that, he was a big part of the game plan. And um, it definitely changed some things. And I don't think we responded well to not having him based on what we had done at practice leading up to that. But, again, all credit goes to them because they did what they were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And um, they held us to seven points. You know, like I said, it's just <laughs> ironic that Maurice got hurt on the play that we scored on for our only points. And then after that, we just, we just didn't do much. I mean, he could we punted six times in that game. I don't think I punted six times all year leading up to that game. Uh, the punt team looked good. I think uh, Kamir Cunningham averaged about 41 yards a punt, but that's not the stat I was looking for at the end. I was looking for more points on the board. But, um, you know, like I said, if you'd asked me uh, leading in that game, what do you think the score would be? I'd have said 30-something, 20-something, either way. I would not have expected anybody to finish that game with seven points. Uh, 
And it's not that I didn't think their defense was that good. I just thought we we would be able to you know move the ball better than what we did. Um, Malachi Jerome came back for us and stepped into a tough role. He threw for over 200 yards. We just couldn't run the ball, you know. So that's that's not his fault. It was the third game in the row. We didn't have any turnovers on offense. I was pleased with that. And I want to say he started the game off like something like eight of nine or something like that. We just as the game went on, like I said, it just we got further and further away from our task, which was picking up first downs, running the clock. Uh, I think Coach told me on Saturday when I talked to Coach Humble, they normally run about 79, 80 plays, and they ran 54, 53 in that game. We ran 52 or 53, so we were about the same right there. Um, but, you know, either way, it still comes down to points. But uh, there were some bright spots. Like I said, defensively, we played really good, um, I thought, at times in that game. Special teams, I thought we played really well uh, at times, especially I already mentioned, you know, Kamir Cunningham. He did an excellent job of punting. Uh, but you know, we just, it just, just didn't come out ahead, but, uh, bye week is here yeah. and during a bye week, this is how we handle it. We practice three days, the middle part of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, normally this week we will not do that because, uh, I'm going to scout Lancaster and DeSoto on Thursday in Lancaster. So what we will do is we'll, we've already practiced Monday, Tuesday, and then we practice Wednesday. And then I go scout Lancaster and DeSoto so we can figure out who we're playing, uh, if we, if, let's see, if DeSoto wins, we play in DeSoto at 7 o'clock next Thursday. Uh, and that's going to be the, I believe it's the 14th. And then if Lancaster wins, we play in Lancaster at 7 o'clock on Friday the 15th. So because we're the lower seed, we have to travel and it'll be to the winner of that game. And then Harker Heights gets the loser of that game of the Lancaster DeSoto game. I don't know what their arrangements are, but that's definitely our arrangements. Hmm. Yeah. So you're headed out of town on my birthday. I am. This is unfortunately so. We've hosted one postseason game since I've been here, and we've been out of town the other four years because uh, this is this was my this is our fifth time making the postseason in six years under me. That's awesome. So that's, that's a it's a great thing. You can definitely tell. You know, it, it, a lot of chatter. Well, can they do it going back from five A to six A? Yes, we can. You know, mm-hmm. it's different ball game, but we still got a good program here. And, we're going to be successful as long as there's buy-in from the kids and the parents and the community. And we are good enough as a staff and a team to where we can kind of figure it out. Because this wasn't a uh, peaches and cream year. We started off extremely rough. Even though we started off 3-1, and one, I told people it, it was kind of fool's gold. And um, once we got by uh, the, the uh, Waco University game, I told our coaches, I said, if this don't get corrected, we may have won our last game, you know, if we don't take care of our business. And so um, it took us a little while longer, but we did fix it. Um, and then, like I said, the three-game stretch twice where we won those three games in a row, the first one being uh, the team out of Mexico and then Ellison and then University. And then we got a two-game losing streak. And then we had uh, uh, Colleen and then uh, uh, Cove and Brian. Probably our biggest win so far this year, biggest two, were at Bryan and University, who was undefeated at the time. If you go by, you know, just kind of go by that. But now, if you look back now, Ellison was a big win, you know, because that's that's a team that at the time they weren't playing, you know, uh, they weren't playing bad, but they just weren't winning games. So you didn't know how good they were. But um, so, I mean, we've got two or three quality wins in there against the playoff teams and um you know, and, and, I, and I'm proud of our guys for, for turning it, this thing around, being coachable, um, and our coaches for sticking with it because I got some new coaches on the staff, and I know they're probably looking at me like, man, is this how it is at Shoemaker? You know, and I, t- I try to tell them, this is not the norm at Shoemaker, but we'll get it fixed. And, and overall, I thought the effort is is what kept us going, and that effort is instilled in them in the off season and in the summertime, and that's what you carry on throughout the year, and that's how you build a program. Well, you got your bye week, so get healthy. Make sure you dress warmly when you head up to North Texas, buddy. Might be kind of cold there. Might be a little rainy, so be ready for all that. But uh, get your scouting done. Find out what they look like and come back and tell us all about it. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's going to be – actually, Thursday, the weather is going to be nasty. So, um, you know, we'll get a good scout report on whoever we're playing, and then next week you and I will sit down and we'll talk about our opponent, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, we'll see if we get something going next week at Raising Canes. I'll get with them, so stay tuned to I-14 Sports and see if we can get all three of our playoff coaches in before the playoffs start, so just stay tuned for that. But, Toby, uh, drive careful when you're headed up to DFW. 
to watch that game and uh, just keep healthy, buddy. You need to get healthy. Yeah, no, it's really just me screaming at people. But either way, I he yelled at me. Too, <laughs> he yelled at me. I appreciate uh, your coverage uh, uh, of our kids. Uh, this is I know this is year thirty for you, but this is year eight for me and you. Um, yeah. And, wow. And yeah, I know it doesn't seem like that. I can remember the first interview we did sitting right here at this desk right here, and um, I didn't know who you were, and I didn't I didn't know who Barry was, you and uh, Barry no, I know. And so I quickly learned who you and Barry were. And I appreciate everything that, that you and all your guys through time uh, have done for our program and the kids of Shoemaker and Clean Eyes D because it means more to us than you know, and we appreciate you more than anything. And I'm going to leave our fans with this. We will let you know very shortly who we're playing. Come out, support us next week on the road, and as always, go Gray Wolves.